Good morning. How's everyone doing? I'll wait for you guys to um, jump on in and then I'll start. Let me know if you can hear me on that side. Got my headphone on, haven't got the, um, you know, the new mic plugged up because, um, you know, thought it'll be better to be able to speak to you directly with it off, you know, headphones rather than through the mic. Lockdown day one. How's everyone doing? Let me just bring this a bit closer. As I said, I'm outside. You can see my sun shining in the background. Brought this little uh, hanging anime. Um, I think it's black cat. Um, fabric poster out. And I uh, thought I'd just sit down outside and enjoy the sun like I did yesterday, as I mentioned. On my private um, Facebook page that, um, you know, get outside and enjoy the sun every morning and in the afternoon because uh, it's good for you, right? Um, it's good to be out in the sun, sit on your porch, sit on your uh, balcony, sit on your uh, steps, hang out with your kids, you know, because this is lockdown. So there's a time to just show the children that it's, it's going to be okay. And I'm sure our grandparents did that for, the, uh, for their uh, great great parents, uh, did that for their kids, uh, their mokopuna, their young ones, their grandchildren. You know, to say, hey, it's going to be okay, we're going to get through this. This is uh, like everybody's saying this, we've, we've never experienced this before in a digital age uh, where we can just basically talk to each other across, you know, like this back in the, um, I guess, in the 40s, in World War One, World War Two, um, 1915. You know, we weren't able to do this. No one was able to do the sort of stuff that we're able to do now. A lot of them couldn't afford t telephones, so they couldn't speak to each other. And the way they got news was through newspaper and, and over the radio. And it wasn't instant like we were able to get it now. I can sit on, uh, you know, watch it on, um, turn on YouTube and see the latest news, turn on, um, go to Twitter, see the latest news. So, it should, uh, you know, any forum you can basically be able to straight away get the news. We're not, we weren't, you know, people weren't able to do that in the past. So we're quite lucky in that sense and we, you know, we should be grateful for that. And I'm always grateful for the you know, digital environment that we have, uh, the instant uh, connection to people across the world. Um, going into this, you know, three three weeks ago, I think I was saying that we've got to be prepared for this, um, because what I was hearing from my friends overseas was, hey, you know, you get, this is, we might have to be in the long haul, and that um, now here we are, we're in lockdown now, for at least a month. Could be more, but hey, at least a month. Um, so, you know, we got to obey our rules, what, uh, what our Prime Minister is saying, what the, um, the committee is saying, what our Health Minister is saying. Um, I have um, nurses and nurses in my family, I have doctors in my family, you know, uh, extended family. And, you know, um, have, um, you know, some people were totally unprepared for this sort of thing, even though they were hearing it, they were listening to what was going on. Some people don't even have food now. A lot of people don't even have toilet paper. I was just watching a YouTube guy going, well, my friend doesn't have any toilet paper, doesn't know how to get any because he lives so far away from later, um, you know, the nearest shop. And um, and so you, you got to think about people like that. And we're just, it's I'm very, very grateful for being so close to where I am. And it was my sister who set me up in this place. And, you know, to, close to my doctor, close to town, close to my chemist to get my uh, medication and stuff. Um, so, and also making sure that, you, you know, ahead of time you're prepared for this. And uh, and here we are, and hey, we're gonna get through this. And uh, as I saw just earlier on, there's 50 more cases and it's like it doubles. And that's the thing, it's, it's gonna double. So we need, and this is the reason we are in lockdown because, hey, I mean, it's just decided that, you know, our help our minister decided that this is what we got to do and um, I'm listening to uh, just the latest news coming out of Africa now they've got 15 uh, countries within the continent of Africa uh, South Africa I guess uh, North Africa as well where they've caught the coronavirus it's in their countries and um, it's in their continent and now they're really far um, full-on preparing for it and getting you know um, checking people and doing tests um, you know, we won't need tests unless we're, um, you know, we're, we are self-isolating as we're already doing now, which is I'm grateful for. Uh, I wish it was sooner. Um, I wish the borders had been closed sooner. 
but hey, we're here. So um, let's hit, hit some pop culture stuff. All right, because commentary is a pop culture site. So that's enough of that. Um, so the latest thing, as we keep seeing, is uh, celebrities are losing their minds. They just, all the attention they, uh, they used to, they're not seeing it anymore. They're not getting it. They're not getting paparazzi to chase them around, trying to get their photos. And that can be addictive, right? Um, you know, uh, it's, it can be like a drug where you're always in the newspaper, you're always hearing a name, and you're always in, you go on social media, there's you, somebody's talking about you. And as we know, social media, media can be addictive. And um, they've done studies on it where, you know, people are living for the likes. I do that myself, obviously, if anybody likes what I've said, or if they posted something that I, you know, I agree with and or if I don't I you know I've had people come in and say why are you following me I said well I like a different uh, ideas different ideologies of people what they think because that makes us better people you know it makes us think about what other people think and th consider those things as I mentioned on other broadcasts um, so yeah celebrities not having the attention is just driving them nuts you know making videos like Madonna and her um, and her um, bathtub in a huge the size of an apartment right a bathtub and the size of an apartment because she's got a guy on the side playing piano <laughs> it's a background music. i was wondering where the music was coming from when i was watching the video again where where is this music coming from and then you know there it is so yeah uh, and rose petals <laughs> in a bathtub so if, if you're lucky have all the money that you need you know um, have servants and stuff for the, for that. You can also have rose paddles and have a guy playing, you know, playing keyboards, piano in the side. But what I loved about it is what, what I posted earlier was Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds saying that, hey, guess what? What we need right now is celebrities. More than we need doctors and uh, pharmacists, firemen, police, military, you know, uh, service workers, food providers. Uh, uh, grocery um, shop stores more than all that we need celebrities right now and he just burned them like major burn because he was seeing what they were doing and he was like like a normal person just roasted them straight away and I think that's kind of it's gonna make them realize that they're not number one of the food chain and they think they are and as you you know about the Ricky Gervais thing with um, with his, you know, with his um, Golden Globes speech, he said, look, come and thank your God, your family, your friends, your producers, your directors, the writers, and get your award and walk off. Don't come up here and preach to people because people don't like to preach. And But here they are again. They totally ignored it at that time, and they're totally ignoring it now in this crisis that we have. And it is a crisis because the world's in lockdown. I mean, you know, Imagine all the businesses that are going to go go out of business, right? Well, especially the small businesses, and those are the ones I really feel for. Uh, I'm self, slightly self-employed. Uh, I'm a home-based business owner kind of thing. You know, we're registered um, and everything. And so I'm used to just being at home and making my comments, writing my books, you know, and then posting it and then gets put online. And then I carry on doing it. And then, you know, every week what I look forward to is me and Jess just going downtown doing our shopping. You know, every Wednesday just going, or once a week just going to town, doing the rounds, talking to people, saying, hello, how are you doing? That social connection that we have. So it's not, you know, so that sort of thing's is awesome, right? You know, for me was because I'm used to isolation. And because, you know, because of my health, I can't always be out and about. I learned that the hard way last year and I had to minimize because I was, my body was really hurting. I'd come home. And I couldn't move. Uh, my legs would get pins and needles, and they would burn because that's the condition that my body is in. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a black cat. Uh, so I'm sitting out of here on my balcony in my apartment. So yeah, so I had to minimize what I was doing. So I, I suffer. I've been self-isolating myself for the last few years because of my condition and so on. But this is the time that you got to think about how to deal with it. If you're not used to being. Um, this sort of isolation we it's not social isolation it's actually physical isolation and that's that's a very important thing to think about is physical isolation right hey Alex can you hear me just just give me a uh, yeah thumbs up if you can hear me bro um, and 
yeah because i don't know if, if this is working or not so i'm just hoping it's doing its thing so yeah so i'm used to it but if you're not used to it like i said earlier this is going to be a bit difficult um and if you're working from home you've got noise you're not used to being at home eight hours a day during the day um and your kids are around uh your young ones are around and you, you know you, you have to you know if you if you're working from home you you kind of have to think about how those that would do they're going to want your attention so you gotta, you got to really think about how to deal with that and uh, hopefully you have already um, coming into this today you've thought about how to deal with that how to just be nicer to your kids at this time because they're going to need you right now to be calm collected and um, disciplined in how you talk how you behave around them and uh, and not isolate them as well because you don't want the kids feeling like they isolated from you right now and that's going to be very important for the kids um, I've had family members who have had to, because of their job, they've had to let their kids go away, right? And I've, they just, yeah, it's not something I was think I thought about, but yeah, because of their job, they had to send their children away. And imagine that for four weeks, you um, and you're thinking about it constantly while you're doing your work, because you're thinking about, hey, how are the kids somewhere else? Uh, one of my friends, uh, who's an artist, was saying that. Uh, they were trying to get out of, um, one of her friends was trying to get out of Auckland to go and be with their family in Hokianga, right? And, you know, hoping to get home before today. So, especially with the roadblocks and stuff, they were saying, um, because we don't want to, people don't want to spread it to other people, right? I, I've, I've got friends overseas who have actually, um, have family members have died from it. And that's why I've been very wary about what I've said, and I've been very wary about how I talk to you guys about it, just being, you know, making the warnings, we're not being crazy about it, talking about how to be prepared, because I've been told, because someone has lost someone, and someone is, all, one of my friends has already got it in Argentina, and I'm hoping to make connection with him to talk about how things are there, because he's an artist, and he's got it, and I'm trying to, you know, have a time, hopefully today, this evening, where I can speak to him uh, on live stream and talk about, you know, how he's dealing with it. Uh, in Argentina, because everybody everywhere has it. I'm not hearing about um, like smaller islands like Tahiti and stuff, but we know Samoa's got it and we know Fiji's got it, right? And we know a little baby in Fiji got it. And also, uh, one of my friends, baby, possible that the baby has it, a 15 month old. So, the, the idea that, and even the thought that people my age aren't getting it, is kind of a falsity. And I'm not trying to be a um, doomsayer or anything like that, I'm just saying. That's why we're in lockdown because the government understands from what they're hearing from overseas that younger people can get it as well. Talking about younger people, as I've said, there, there's some crazy young people around the world right now uh, trying to get fame by licking toilets. All right, there's some crazy, crazy stuff they're doing. There's a guy who's going to jail for five years for licking produce, packets of produce at this time going around the Walmart and licking you know, packets of things that people would be buying, you know, not worrying about what concerns. It's five years in jail uh, for, you know, behaving that way. And that's the kind of like mentality of some young people because they don't get it in their heads. They're not aware of what's happened, How, you know, like something like the Spanish flu, you know, where wiped out millions of people as such in the past. And they're not used to the idea of being in lockdown and worry about things, as I mentioned, um, Monday about how how certain things are we're going to be like not being able to get access to now for a month um, you know because like you know uh, foods open and all that but the idea that we just can't I can't just walk down the street now because I'm worried about catching with someone else not worrying the weirdness way but but more, not more worried about myself but maybe carry, being a carrier and passing it to older people that I meet and that sort of thing is something that we need to think about other people and you know, and especially our health workers, you know, I, I you know, because I have mem members of my family who are health workers, right, um, they don't want to pass it on to their children, they don't want to pass it on to their family members, and they don't want to pass it on to other people that come into the hospital at this time. So the other thing I was kind of, I was thinking about was how to actually look after yourself at this time physically, right, because I know, um, because we're going to be like, okay, we're just going to hang around at home, uh, and, um, and I have to think about that as well, that 
we don't go running around up and down stairs we don't you know bang into each other because we don't want to um, put more pressure on our medical system right now you know on our, on our hospitals on our doctors right now because they need to look after the people that need to be looked after right now okay so we don't want to be running around breaking arms and legs or breaking a thumb and running off there or you know messing around with knives or whatever silly things so yeah hopefully you understand where i'm coming from about that about a about a very 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 awesome health system that we have in new zealand and and i say that it's very awesome because a lot of people come to new zealand to use our health system and abuse it from overseas so this is an interesting time because it's going to teach us to really rely upon our own country and in the sense that we can rely upon our own country for our resources you know we're a country that produces food huge amounts of food for the world so now that we can't export that the food is here for us and it's going to be cheaper for us because it's going to be perishable right so you don't have to worry about rushing to much supermarket right now because there's food there right and the food chains are going to be there um so we don't you know and we we produce a lot of food in new zealand meat milk cheese bread butter you know um vegetables fruit so yeah flour you know we mill sugar and stuff like that for other countries you know sugar cane comes here and we mill it refine it chelsea right uh and so we're really we, we're in a really really good place in new zealand and it's going to show people how good we have it and, I, and i've always said it i love my country i love my adopted country you know been here for about 40 years and i love it because of the amazing lifestyle we get to live the easy access to everything we have, uh, the friends we make, the different, um, especially with the pop culture community in Whangarei, especially in Northland, they were able to just be so welcoming. And I think that's a great thing. But of course, sometimes people abuse it. Like that Indian guy that really hacked me off, if you, you know, uh, who basically got off the plane and said, I'm not worried about it. Who's going to watch my open view? You know, just straight after the, we announced that the planes were going to be closed, he gets on the plane and goes, I'm not worried about it where I'm going to go and one of the heroes of this time was a guy who you know found out that the helicopter guy found out that there was people terrorists who just come up and were going for Queenstown on the helicopter and he just basically took them to the airport uh, to the police station flew them straight to the police station said yep quarantine these guys because he realizes as we all should that he could have got it and then he could have gone home to his family and passed it on so we're I think we're up to about close to 200 now but hey hopefully we can get ahead of it and like i said we have a great health system and we're in a great place in new zealand and i think uh, we i wish we had moved faster to close the borders but hey here we are so yeah um also i mean a lot of us we have our space to grow um, gardens and stuff and this is the thing that i gotta really um pass on is that um i've always you know um always tried to for the last 20 odd years right or 15 odd years i've tried to have a garden and stuff maybe even longer once I was able to have my own place where you actually have a little you know area of garden where you actually have easy access to your own food if you need to in times like this and of course hopefully there will never be a time like this again but you know because we got to look after ourselves and and the other thing that I learned from growing up was that my mom, my mom always like I said before pantries were always full with dry food you know rice flour sugar uh, I just heard one of my family members overseas isn't able to get access to food people panic and bought out everything so there's a delay in getting access to food so going forward i think it's a good thing for our, for our millennials and our z's to learn at this time of how um, to not be so worried about politics worried about uh, you know issues that don't really matter but really worry, you know, be mindful, not worried, but mindful of how to um, look after each other. So um, that's enough of, of that. So, the, yeah. So there's, yeah, I mentioned earlier about Africa. So there's going to be, um, Africa is a continent that has suffered a lot in the past, um, you know, with live aid and stuff, which brings me to, I think it was Lionel, Lionel Richie who was talking about like doing another uh, live aid remake. It's like, who wants that right now you know it's silliness that people these think you know celebrities think that way but yeah so i lived through um glybate uh feminine africa was really really bad 
So when we came out, during that time, our parents were telling us, look at um, Africa and look at how little food they have and look at how what happened. So appreciate what's being put on your table and appreciate food, appreciate what you've been given to eat. You know, when you worry about, oh, I don't want to eat peas, mom and dad would go, look, look at Africa, they don't have food. And so we're gener our generation were raised that way with, um, with us. Uh, Gen X's, right, um, and so there was that for us to learn from, and so I, for the millennials and Gen Z's, I'll have this to learn from, and every experience, whether good or bad, is a learning experience, if you look at it as that, and if you focus as a learning experience, uh, the Chancellor of uh, uh, Germany, Angela Merkel, has got coronavirus, so there's talk where the uh, the health minister is going to have the most is going to be the most powerful person in that na in that country, and he's going you know they're in lockdown like most of Europe is in complete lockdown, right? Um, the worst, of course, you know, is Italy, complete lockdown there, and just they just left it too late. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, we need to hurry and close our borders. Uh, and yeah, and just keep people out. But we, of course, we like I said, we're welcoming. We wanted our people back. We wanted our citizens back. Uh, we wanted permanent residents back. Uh, we wanted our family back, right? But also, you have to weigh that up with what is that going to do for us, right? Um, and so, of course, here we are. So, Britney Spears, as you know, uh, she went full communist. On, on Twitter and um, said that you know that everybody you know rather than saying I'm gonna give some for them my money my, my money that every, this is equalizer for everybody and we should look at being a communist country that's about doing America and I don't like communism I really don't uh, if you if you really look at the history of communism and, and in other countries you'll find that um, they really it doesn't really help anyone at the top, when it comes to communism, you look at China, look at what China did as a communist nation. So whenever Western people, and like Britney, um, Britney Spears talks about communism and stuff, I kind of think, well, you guys don't understand. Look at North Korea, look at uh, Venezuela, what has happened there. The, uh, you know, there's only a couple of months ago, people were lining up for about hundreds of meters trying to get bread because they left in a couple of people at a time. So we're lucky that we don't have that. And I don't think we'd ever, ever want communism or socialism in New Zealand. And also China, you look at what China did. So when it comes to communism, and and I've studied communism, even at school, uh, at college, I guess, uh, a little bit, we took, you know, we looked at uh, countries like uh, Germany at the time, straight out of, you know, World War II, and how that works. So there's always, a leader at the top who has the who has complete power. So what that means is when someone has complete power, that means anybody under him, if they disagree, they're out. And I've talked about this before. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because this is what Britney, Mur um, Britney Spears is talking about. And I keep thinking of Britney Murphy. She was an amazing person. Yeah, I love Britney Murphy. She was an amazing actress. Um, yeah, so that's something. So comic book shops are really you know back to what, what we do comic book shops are really uh really under the gun right now the diamond announced yesterday uh, see talk about communism diamond is the only company in the world that uh, distributes comic books so you have one monopoly and nobody else is allowed to be in there distributing if you're a small company like ours with the Rising Sun, you can directly go and talk to them and if you're independent. And this is where the independents are more powerful than the mainstream because when it comes to comics, when you have a single, single entity that distributes all the mainstream comics and they say, well, like they did yesterday, we're not going to distribute anymore, that is going to kill the mainstream market. And, they, and the comic pros who have been ragging on customers for at least, minimum of five years but most of them about 10 years who've been ragging on them for customers saying you know you don't tell us what to you know what we should write you don't tell us how we should do things if you don't like our politics don't read our books 
and people didn't read their books. And that's the thing. So if you, somebody tells you not to do something and they treat you bad, you won't go, you won't go buy their books. So, I mean, over the last five years, I haven't really bought any um, DC or Marvel books because I remember when I came out of closing comic trade, I realized that I was left with so many books that were just rubbish because I thought they were good books and people read them and they, they didn't come back to read the next one because, you know, because with me, with, and this is the thing about comic books, with diamonds, it's two months in advance. So you gotta pay for the next two books out of whatever money you have in your pocket. And so when diamond is the only distributor, you can't send it back. The, in the old days, you could just rip the covers off and go, you know, I'm gonna send the cover back to you and get my money back, you know. But in the last few years, I think it's about 20 years, maybe 15 years, you have been able to do that because there's no challenges to the company. So you've got a monopoly on comic books. And because there's one company that has a monopoly on it, if they say we're not going to do it, that's it. So the comic pros are freaking out. You know, they're, they're trying to play nice now after being after years of abusing people online and, um, you know, through um, through videos, through magazines, through their, you know, um, blogs. Excuse me. My Dr. Strange Cup. Um, you know, and so because I've done that, people have just turned them off. So you've you've got people with movie deals or TV shows who are basically only written 8,000 books getting movie deals, whereas if it's someone who's doing an independent comic book and has done tens of thousands, because they're outside of that mainstream, they don't have a look at. So you, and the other things that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm political and, and, but I don't, and you know, I don't write for, as a political piece in my comic books. I write the story, story, story. That's my whole thing. It's like, how does each character work? So what are their motivations? And so I've mentioned that before. But these guys, they basically all day long abuse and harass people who disagree with them. Um, you know, and I, I disagree with a lot of them. But I won't, you know, I won't go out of my way to, har to har harass people because I know that at the end of the day, they could be my bread and butter and a lot of these people are realizing that now that diamonds closed they're realizing wait i need to change my game but it's too late so i mentioned um rob liefeld a couple of weeks ago about it about going to patreon and gal simone going to youtube after years of um abusing youtubers and saying they're no good and that way because youtube especially YouTubers who basically have a really good following, who started with nothing, just like everybody else, and have a good following, have a good connection with the, with the, with the, with their followers and subscribers, where they actually earn a good living from being a YouTuber, right? Uh, and you guys know all this, I don't say, but the reason I mention it is because for years they've been ragging on them, and now they're trying to start up their own thing. And getting back to Rob Liefeld, he just tweeted this morning that. I'm gonna, because of what's happened, I'm gonna go direct to the customer. I'm, the, I'm gonna, you know, he's saying he's gonna get a, um, um, I think releasing a 20th or 30th anniversary of The Prophet, one of, you know, one of his well, better known books after Deadpool, right? And he was saying, I'm gonna go to, um, I'm going to go to uh, direct to customer. But he is 10 years, five, five, 10 years behind on this, all right? And so, I mean, I started YouTubing in 2007, but I went away, right? Um, I had situations that just made me not want to do that, um, you know, be public about myself or that. Uh, it, was a com it was a cooking show right, on YouTube, so you can still find it. I might actually put it, put it up here uh, because there's some good, good, uh, good, um, um, good recipes on there. Um, so... Yeah, so he's decided he's going to go direct to market. And I said, look, we've been doing that for a long time. But we've been while we've been doing that, we've been supporting the shops as well. So we, we actually go, um, you know, with, with Rising Sun Comics, we actually go into the shops and say, hey, look, you know, hold this. And if it doesn't sell, we'll, we'll you know, we'll buy it back off you and such. Uh, if they've got an invoice. So that's been going on for, for about 14 years. So these new these guys now with the comic pros realizing that 
you know, this is the new game in town. And the new game in town is that we should have been doing, treating customers better. We should have been looking up our, you know, um, our customers like they're our bread. That what they pro they are a provider, and so they have and they have and now it's too late for them, and they're realizing it's too late, and now they're worried, and so they're going crazy on on Twitter about it, you know, um, calling for truces. Sorry, sorry, you know, um, you know, sorry, we've been like this. We've been really, you know, harassing and being abusive and mean and spirited, and but I guess it's too late for them for that. I think for us. Uh, independents, you know, for independent companies, independent producers, independent um, uh, studios, it's good because our connection to shops and to people is built on respect and treating them like, um, pro, you know, putting them first and showing them that they matter, that we appreciate what they do for us by buying, by subscribing, by, you know, you know getting, uh, coming back to get each comic every month. You know, whenever as soon as we, we produce them, and it's it's a difficult time, right? Because now, and and talking about difficult time, uh, you know, um, people, you know, the main com companies aren't even producing books right now. Uh, some of the top ones aren't producing books. Uh, they uh, like Valiant for a whole month. They're closed, right? Valiant being Bloodshot, as uh, Bloodshot, as I mentioned, um, really Bloodshot, Vin Diesel. Uh, um, it, there were, it wasn't a bad spot. Blood, um, blood shots was in a bad spot. Came back, came out of the week of coronavirus lockdown, so they've lost millions. And I think they'll probably go to uh, Netflix maybe because that's a big game in town, not a monopoly, right? But a, what a but a big game in town. So I reckon they'll probably. Uh, I don't know if it, if it had a Warner's with Bloodshot and Valiant. Uh, because I know they're only, Valiant isn't big enough to have their own streaming site, so because they don't have their own streaming thing, they won't be able to put Bloodshot on there, or they might go live stream on something else, some sort of other thing, pay-per-view. And this is, like I've mentioned in the last couple of weeks, that this is going to really affect the cinemas, really affect how we view movies, uh, because we're already used to watching movies at home. We're already used to watching it on Netflix. And with Disney now, with Apple TV and stuff, hey, they might even go to Apple TV, right? With Bloodshot. But Bloodshot, I think, has just made enough to do okay. And uh, I think it was like made for about something about 40 million and is able to got in about 60 million. So it's paid off all the advertising costs and all that and covered it, you know, the expenses. But there's no profit at the moment on it. But hopefully, you know, um, whatever they decide, you know, they'll be able to um, recover some debt on that. And because there's no money there, Valiant had to close shop for a whole month. That means there's, uh, they've told their writers to stop writing, they've told their artists to stop write, um, doing artwork. Because they're, like America, you know, with American comics, you get page rates. Like everywhere you get page rates. But that's why a lot of um, um, artists are overseas doing the work. Um, the, one of the things that's really um, strange right now is that Jim Lee, right, who, um, because Didio got fired from DC, Jim Lee hasn't said anything on Twitter yet, on social media. He hasn't advertised anything, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, hasn't Twittered, spoke, or posted anything about what's happening at DC. That's why people at DC are worried hard out, because he's the new boss, right? He was a co-publisher, uh, co now he's the main publisher. And it seems like he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's got in, he's been put in a position of being, you know, of being the head publisher, the main publisher, and has no idea what he's doing. And because he has no idea what he's doing, he hasn't said anything. Otherwise, he'd be up there saying something. Uh, but of course, C.B. Sobolski, um, the publisher for, um, for, um, for Marvel, right? He's, he's going on about is trying to keep his favorite uh, subway uh, subway shops open and worry about what he's eating, you know, his cafes and all that, not posting, but yeah. he was basically saying, all right, this is the weirdest thing about this guy. He's a comic boss, right? He's, he's of Marvel, he's a main comic boss. 
and he's telling people to watch TV at this time, to watch movies, not to read comics, not to buy comics online, not to get your digital effects, Amazon, Kindle, whatever, right? And also, while I'm talking about that, check out Rises and Comics on Amazon and Kindle. Uh, we've got some books on there, so if you need something to read, want to buy some books, I'm able to get it physically, you know. But our our, our um, store's open uh, on risingsoncomics.com, so if you want to um, order some books anyway, right, and it will arrive once this is all over. So, yeah, so CB Swarovski is basically talking about food and TV during this time when he should be talking about go going and buying digital comics off from Marvel Comics, right? Keeping the business going, keeping people employed. But he's not even thinking about that, right? He's thinking about food. Of course, we all think about food, but he's thinking about telling people to keep um, cafes open and stuff and, you know, worry about it. But the guy's in charge of Marvel Comics. So if you got people like these in charge, you kind of go, well, why are you telling people to watch TV right now when you should be going read comics, right? But it's like I'm like when I get on here, I tell you to read comics because that is my, that's what I'm about. So you know, so that you would be read some of our free stuff. Hopefully, buy it later on, maybe print it, or buy the printed stuff we already have. And there's some great books. Uh, there's some online comics on the website. So check it out. So at the end of the day. You know, um, the silence is, as they say, is deafening, right? Um, and so, but especially when it's coming out of the big two, uh, you know, main producers internationally of comic books. Um, so the other thing is um, in finishing, right? That's enough of me in finishing. Let me just take my time because I don't want to take this too long. 40 minutes, uh, for 35 minutes. Okay. So in finishing, right? Keep calm. Our, our, you know, we have a great government, we have a great uh, health system, we have a great uh, resources for food, um, and, you know, we're economy, it's good, in that sense that we know, you know, we're in a place of good, and um, the finance minister was saying that our, our we, we're in a good state, we don't have too much debt, uh, we have a lot of good budget, and so we don't have to worry too much. Hopefully, if you're like me, you prep for this, you made sure in the last couple of weeks when I was speaking to you guys that that you got some, you know, stocked up. Uh, but don't panic, right? Don't panic. Uh, if you're not used to being isolated for long periods of time, read books, like uh, read some, uh, you know, read some comics. If you're not able to, um, you know, go online. There's a lot of free stuff, web comics on our side. There's web comics that you can read. Um, watch some anime, watch some um, cartoons. I've been binging on, like, I've already completed first season of um, Family Guy. I have a whole stack of DVDs I can watch. I've collected, like, oh, maybe over 100, 200 um, hardcover novels from the from uh, from the 50 cent and dollar bin at the library, so I've got that set up. But also, you know, stacks of comics and uh, uh, games and stuff. So, don't get all stressed out, guys. Um, so I'll see you next time. Hope, um, you know, we'll try to do lockdown tomorrow as well. And uh, lockdown day two. Or, you know, whatever else I get, I'll get a chance to speak about. I'll do that. So, cookie down. No. If you're watching for overseas, I hope you're in good health. And, uh, that, you know, that you're with your loved ones. And that you, you know, that you are really careful about what you're doing. And you're not trying to be silly with things and here in New Zealand hey look after your whanau look after yourselves and I'll talk to you soon kaki te anu.